Jesus. Yeah. 
God's mercies that we who are yet standing are not consumed. Holy, 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 holy. Hallelujah to God. I salute God. I honor the God of glory, the king of my life, the author and the finisher of our faith. I salute the fine pastor and apostle tonight and his lovely wife. I salute all the officers of the church tonight in the wonderful, awesome name of Jesus. To Bishop Scott and to all of you who are here tonight, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Please be seated in the house of the Lord. I do not intend to make you happy. You don't even have to say amen. You don't even have to raise your hand. You don't even have to say a word. Because some of you have come tonight to see who that. Meaning, who is she? Or where she come from? Meaning, where did she come from? I mean, I really like our hat. We don't even like how she look. So you can put on your scanner right now. Let me tell you my story. So I, I, so I don't need you to shout. Because I got a story. I got a testimony. This is my story. And this is my song. I'm praising my Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, the day long. Don't sing with me. I said, This is, this is my song. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. So let me come a little closer. So you can have a look. So you don't have to strain your eyes. You know, you know as a wonder. Corinne Duncan is my name. Born in Duncan Strillon, February 18, 1960. Baptized in Jesus' name at the Pentecostal Gospel Temple under the leadership of Carmen Stewart. 1978. Summon just a call. Been on this road a long time. I stepped out of an elevator onto a wet floor. 911 Church Avenue, that's where we lived. Stepped out onto a wet floor, slipped, skidded. My neck went that way, this way. And I spent eight months at home laying on a bed that was made from wood. I walked like this. And they said, they said, I wouldn't be able to walk. They said, one, two, three, C spine, disc out of place. Hello, lumbar four, five, and six. Hello, out of place. 
My mother put a diaper on me so I could go to the bathroom in the diaper till she got home because I wasn't going to be able to make it to the bathroom. Told you I got a story. So I went to Kings County Hospital and they say, well, you know, we're going to have to go into your spine. Oh. Well, I said, well, that's all good, but do you have any literature <laughs> that I can read? Right. Because I can read. Right. So I want to read up on what you're going to right. do. Right. Well, they say, you don't need all of that right now because you don't have any movements on one side of your body. I said, but it is important that I read before I sign. Yes. Not true. Yes. So they release me. Some of them not read, or not just a sign. That's why your bills so high. <laughs> and you're in so much debt. Because you didn't read before you sign. So I went home. Two years after that, I was going to our holy convocation like this at Remsen Avenue. And some teenagers ran the red light and hit my car going that way in a 360 degree direction. So I, I ended up back where? In the hospital. Injuring where? C spine one to three and lumbar six seven eight. This time they say, Lady, you're crazy because you're going to be crippled. Well, I said, Doctor, not a problem. Just let me talk to my father. As long as I talk to my father and he gives me the okay, not a problem. So the church came. Did I say the church? the church? I said the church. The church visited me on a Sunday afternoon. And they prayed. The church prayed. I don't get it go ahead yet. But the church prayed. And when they were leaving a very unassuming sister. I mean, nobody no count, you know. She, she can't bring a word, you know. But she came back after the crowd left. She said, Sister Corinne, the Lord gave me a word. He said to tell you, I am the Lord that he left thee. I send my word and heal thy diseases. He said to tell you, I wound you. And only me can heal you. I say, God bless you. So when the doctors came, about 11 of them, trainee and all, because everybody want to court. Everybody want to experiment. Do I look like a guinea pig? So I said to them, well, you know, Dr. Ramajan, my father said he's the one that heals and he's the one who caused the wound so when he gets ready he'll do the healing now they're getting ready to commit me to psychiatrist because you don't have any movement on one side dead. 10% already lost. And you telling me you waiting on your father. Where is he? I said, he's right here. Right here. <laughs> Never leave you. Never left me. Never forsake me. He said, my grace. I told you I got a story. So, I said, well, you can't keep the papers. 
can't say it. Because <laughs> my father said. So I begin to pack my things. Even though I could hardly walk. And they discharged me from the Kings County Hospital. With, with, with corporal pills called Tylenol for the pain. But look what Jesus did. I said, look what Jesus did. Some of you can't say amen because you've never been there. You have no idea what it is to be healed. You have no idea what a miracle is. You have no idea what a testimony is. So that's why you can sit and look cute. you've never been there so you don't understand my story so this is what I mean by you don't have to shout I brought my own show I brought my own fire I brought my own matches I brought my own oil when I think Shout. No, no. Yeah, I can praise him all by my self. Anybody in here have a breast problem? Oh, anybody in here been diagnosed with anything in your I wear the medical term for breast doctor? The mammary? Anybody have any trouble in the mammary department? Come down again. <laughs> so when I came, I was in New York in February, and the, you know, at our age, <laughs> yeah. I was only be one in my age, I guess. <laughs> you have to check up on yourself. Nobody's not going to check up on you for you. You can use all the max factor and all the even and all the whatever, it can't hide it. <laughs> it cover it for time, then it begins to peel. So I decided to do the womanly thing and have my mammogram checked. When it came back there, sir, in the African jacket, <laughs> it says there that there we see some abnormality. When you hear abnormal, your blood pressure. Not you. Your blood pressure gone sky high. To know what the word mean. <laughs> well, the, the, you know, the doctor says, a uh, Jewish woman, she said, well, you know what? I want a sonogram. I want my own readings. I don't trust that record. So I want my own. So I did it again. And it says, dense tissue in the right breast. It dense so till them can't even see where the first one them said they saw. Dense. Dense means dark. Think, not you. <laughs> so they sent a message to me in Jamaica where I was on mission. They said, Come up here now. And what we see now looks so nice. So here I am again. And you see, from them tell me that in February, saints, listen to me. Listen what I have done. You don't have to do it. Every morning when I showered, yes. instead of lotion, yes. 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 Yes.
you that. So I came back and I went again. Because Jesus supposed to do it. Him say. Him right. I go do. That's right. So we are going to see now. If he's a liar. Yes. Yes. Come on. Come on. He told me he would never leave me. No. He said. He said. I said my word. That's what he told me. All the good word. Oh yeah. 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 So I went. Lay down on the bed. And the Russian lady scan. And she mama grass. And she son arise. She said, I don't understand. So she go over here and look at the films from 2009. She said, but, but I'm not seeing what they are seeing. Let me look at this one again. She scrolled across and she went to the spot and she said, How did they come up with that picture? How did they come up with that reading? I think I better do another. I said, Doctor, I have an idea where the thing went. You don't need to do another. I will spare you the electricity and the technician expertise. I am going to tell you what I mean. Jesus took it out, carried gone up a heaven to hold it as evidence. So when I get there in the Korean city, city, this is what I. So look here now. There is absolutely nothing in the breast except the breast. There is nothing in the breast except the breast. Jesus! I said, Jesus! So you know, officer, amen. I got my own. I got my own story. He raised me up, lifted me up from sinking sand. If he did it for me, did you say that? No secret. No secret. He's done it for me. And listen now, like Israel, it has nothing to do with me. Right. Jesus said never have anything to do with your holiness why I choose you. It's because of his love right. and his mercy. Right. Sit down and you're making me very nervous. Hey. Women, I have a problem with you. I have a problem with you. When I look a bit too stoosh. When I look a bit too quiet. When I look a bit too starchy fine. <laughs> you know what? I think it's the pink. Pastor, I think it's the pink. Messing them up. You see if them did have a red. <laughs> red for the blood. You see if them did have a red. Make a difference. So everybody I look and feel pink. Everybody I check out your pink. Nobody now look on the white. Nobody is paying attention to the white. Everybody checking out the pink. And say what a nice shade. That look like plum. That not go with fair dress. You know, match. Sis, your shoes are ready. No go with your. Mm -mm. That's what the focus has been. And the color of the pink, the white, no cold. And the white is supposed to be symbolizing our. So you 
ever sing one certain kind of song to raise up everybody. I forget you have to worship. Me no night. I'm not in it. Means I'm not going to raise any song to get you on fire. Because only fire can draw. So if you are a source of smoke, and if your fireside cool, no amount of fire. It's women's night, they say. And I, I sat there and I said, mighty God, some of you need a tsunamite woman experience. So you can praise God. Some of you, you need an Elizabeth experience. Some of you need a woman with the issue of blood experience. So you can begin to praise God. But you're too comfortable. <laughs> you just comfortable. You look so nice. You know, I want to style up your clothes. Should I come in one bit of tired? Too nice. Too fashionable. I want to tell you something that I, I saw, I read. It says that um, the church is known for a lot of things these days. Why the pastor over there so can preach? Say amen, no? Amen. Yeah. The church over there, sir? The musician, them. But the ministers them over the church, eh? Ooh, when they dress. The pastor wife over there so pretty subtle. Ooh. Lord, the choir over that church. Have you ever seen the chandeliers them over that? The building over the where the church they immaculate and the ushers them pump point. What you ever hear anybody say the people them over the church they holy? You see the church over there, so they are known for holiness. You ever hear anybody say that? Oh, no, no, talk to it. <laughs> My lightning flash. You ever hear anybody say that? The people of that church are known for holiness. They have a standard over there. And Master, if you no not intend to join and abide by that standard, don't take up membership over that. We have a problem. We have a serious problem. Because the world is recognizing our church for everything else but the standard of holiness. You know, sister, we have a problem. Big problem. Do you see why the souls are not coming? Do you see why even that when they come, sister Sherry, they're not even getting saved. They don't want our Jesus. Because we are hypocrites. We are liars. The truth is not in us. Our holiness is only on Sunday. Our holiness is only a convocation time. with that. Amen. There's an old song that says, what if God is not happy with our prayers? What if he is not pleased with the way we live? What if he takes away his love and his spirit from above? God! Just be pleased. Somebody say, what if? What if? God is not happy with our praise. 
What if he's not pleased with the way we are living? And the way we are living, we're talking about holiness. We've heard it on Monday. We've heard it on Tuesday. You've heard it on Wednesday. The Bible says, have I not spoken to you once? Twice, three times. That holiness unto the Lord is our work. That holiness becomes thy house. That holiness is a habit. With the married people in here. Raise your hands. Married people. Ladies, would you stand and help me here? Ladies who are married, please stand. No. Your husbands have a bad habit. Amen. Take off his shoes. Amen. Can I get some amen? amen? Let me talk to a real sister over here. Yes, yes, yes. It's women's night. Let's get real here. Amen. Take off his shoes. Right this so mm -hmm. bad habit. Yes, 24 hours. And you, the help me. What your name is? Help, no, I know that your name is. Help me. Your duty is to go behind husband. Darling, remember to put your shoes over here. Yeah, yeah. All right. Seventeen years. Then come back the next evening and I'll leave it there and leave it up here. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Honey, how many times I must tell you to put the shoes over here? It belongs in the closet. 17 years. It is a habit. Holiness must be a habit. It can't come out of you. Holiness must be a habit. It cannot leave you. If you buy shoes closet, I'm going to live today because it's a habit. And nothing that you do can change the habit. I was sitting and I said, Jesus, is Montreal going? And these people can be. I must say, those people over there, you know, Jesus. He said to tell you that holiness must be your yard clothes. And I said, Jesus, oh, you must expect me to go over to the French province and tell the people them about yard clothes. Yeah. Uh, where the French speakers, what is the French word for yard? <laughs> Who? Maison. I get the accent right, maison. <laughs> Hallelujah. Holiness must be your maison. Your yard clothes. And I'm sitting there and I say, Jesus, you alter your mind in the holy convocation. I must go tell the people that holiness must be them yard clothes. He say, yes, I want you to picture your grandmother. So I picture my grandmother, Doris Brown, a tall lady that looked like Mother Willie. All I can see and remember of this woman is in her water boots, her machete in her right oh hand, <laughs> her broad hat and her tired dress up and her bib. That's what I remembered of her. Every holiday I would go up to Ulster Spring, her that she avoid. Her yard clothes. My fondest memory is of her yard clothes. The only time she took off the yard clothes was when she going to bed. So she had her night clothes. Her night clothes can't wear in her yard. Night clothes are private thing. So the enemy must recognize in her yard clothes. Your neighbor must recognize you in your yard clothes. In her your holiness clothes. Come on. Have it. 
problem is that we have too much change off. That's right, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Holiness, we are talking about so we have one Sunday clothes. <laughs> Different from the Saturday clothes. <laughs> Different from the Tuesday clothes. Because you know the Friday night clothes have to turn up a little. You know. <laughs> it have to go up a little more, you know. To have a little more exposition in the chess department, you know. Hello, somebody. Friday night clothes are party clothes. How we have a set of office clothes. Because, you know, it's a raise we want. And the boss office over there. Yeah. So we have to have our different clothes. God said, I want to recognize you know, your judging clothes. What you wear Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's the way. He said to tell them about the way. I said, The way? He said, Yes, the way. He said, There is one way. Amen. One way one. to holiness. The Bible said, to him, There is a highway. Yes. Not Andrew's way. No. Cahoon way. No. Scott way. Duncan way, God's way, or no way. You can't just as you please. You can't come as you please. You can't go as you please. You can't speak as you please. One way. Highway. The way of holy. The way of truth. See, this holiness thing, yes. we take it lightly. Mm. When you, you use the man with the study ration. <laughs> Reading the Jewish translators say holiness means cut off. That's what holiness means. Cut off. So if we cut you off, it means say you over here, sir, and I over here. And there's a gulf between us. We, we have no connection. Holiness, pretty girl, is that God wants you to be separated from the world. Amen. And the things of the world. Of the world. That's all like a hard thing. Come on. Yeah? So God help me with the message yes. while I was on the plane. I don't have any theology to give you. You hear? Go ahead. So if you were expecting a doctoral presentation, think again. You know, up the cable, you know the word. Jesus. So I'm sitting on the plane. Yes. And I have the last seat at the back. Never sat at the back of the plane before. And I said, but when you almost not make it, when the front of the plane land at Montreal, I am still at the bar, said Jesus. Never mind, Lord. We will get there. So I'm sitting at 19A. And beside me was a, should I say Asian? Because I don't know whether she's Korean or whatever. But she's sitting beside me. And God said, oh, let me show you. What I mean by holiness. I said, well, this is Jesus, not easy. <laughs> he said, take out your pen and write. He said, 19A, 19B. He said, food. I made the column right there. I'll give it to you. Food. I was eating grapes and blueberries. Passenger 19B was having a sandwich with some yellow mustard and, a, and ketchup and a piece of meat in there. I said grace, point number two. The lady beside me just kept digging in the food. She never had a word to say. 
You come in with me? <laughs> she just kept digging. And, and I am picking one grape at a time. The food was different. Notice? The attitude towards the food was different. I gave God thanks, passenger just kept on eating. He said, point number three, your dress. When I look my brown skirt, he said, full length. And I write, full length. He said, look beside you. Half naked. That's what I wrote. Half naked. From her hip, she had on a blouse that was designed to be a blouse, but she had it on as a dress. He said, write the word ornaments. And I wrote ornaments on the passenger 19A, which was me. And decided him say, right, just a natural beauty. That's right. That me right. That's right. Passenger 19B was tattooed from her ankle up. My God. How I know that? Because the dress was here right. and she just crossed her legs. Jesus said that me mean by holiness. You must be different. Yes. You must be different. I must be able to recognize you. I must be able to pick you out. You must be separated from the rest of the crew. You can't dress like them. You can't look like them. You can't talk like them. Tell me one more. What more can Jesus do? What else you want me to say to you which you have not heard since Monday? I can't make up nothing. Tell me, what, what do you want to hear? That you can go where you want to go? That you can wear what you want to wear? That you can say what you want to say? Not in this way! It's not an ordinary way. It's not a common way. It is a high. So let me tell you something. God not impressed with your prettiness. God is not impressed with your white clothes and your pinkness. He's interested in your obedience to his word. Your submission to his word. As a man, I'm a man Kind of a little boy as pastor. Hey! Not too. And I'm a little boy as pastor. So, one who see him as a little boy, not too. Oh my God. I mean, I'm a little boy, pastor. I'm a little boy, pastor. I mean, I'm a little boy, tell me nothing. Touch not. Handle not. Carmen Stewart, thank you, Pastor. Carmen Stewart taught me as a young girl, said, if God put a horse to lead you, follow the horse. If God put Brother Drawn Crow, the carrion, to lead you, you better follow. Because you don't know when you're going to become the Drawn Crow. You can't talk about holiness and of the manners. You can't talk about holiness and of the respect. You can't talk about holiness when you want to do as you like, do as you please, go where you please, come and go. You want to be ordained and appointed and anointed, and you don't want to obey. The altar is open. Because he's not saved yet. God wants a people who will obey. God wants a people who will obey. God wants a people who will obey. Will obey. Darling, you may be the only girl in your class that dress like that. You may be the only girl in your class 
That don't have you no fandangles. You be that girl. Amen. Let everybody point and say, but oh, she dressed different. Amen. Everybody must say, but you see that girl there over there, sir? You say, oh, she dressed. Yeah, we should have tried to look like she. You're different. Beautiful. Amen. And different. And God wants you to stand out from the rest. He doesn't want you to be a part of the crowd. Because what he has in store for you, good God, all my seed pumpkin, you're going to have to go get basket and handbag and suitcase. What do you want from God? Kingdom, what do you want? What do you want? You want another suit? Wait, you want another wife? Okay, then. But just, uh, you know, make it plain, because, you know, the double wife is in style these days. Don't say nothing, pastors, because some of y'all support it, condone it. Allow it. You allow it. You bring them in your pulpit to preach. You allow it. So you helping the way of holiness to be stumbled. I put blockage in there. You know, if you bring them in there, young people never watch you. The church will watch you. The internet preaching will take the message from it. Go by your fears and seek a word for the people of God. You know, you ask me why I'm not married. Ask me now. Because me want a man to lead me. Me no want to lead no man. When him blink for all of this. You can't lead me if you not. You don't walk in the way. We went them. You know, Sissy looking so nice. Go bush with that. That's right. Put that in the garbage. It's going to take more than that. When the young sister, when the unmarried sister. Talk to you for a minute. Let them see a women's man. So let me talk to you. Had it not been for God, had it not been for this way of holiness, if you, you know, talk to one of my single sisters I'm talking to, if you saw and knew some place where I fell, where I got messed up, young people. You said, then, then she, the doctor lady, yes! Because I, I wanted to come out of the way. Yes. I chose to step out of the way. Yes. But when God has a hand on you, yes. when God has a hand on you, if you take the wings of the moon, It's hard, it's easy to get messed up single women and single men, but it's so hard to clean up. Can I get a witness in here? It's hard to clean up. And some of these so called sanctified, holy looking people here that pretending that they're holy. I better take a tissue right now. Wipe off the makeup. My God. Wipe off the facade. 
Because you're living a lie. You're pretending to be what you're not. And so you're leading people astray. Stop pretending that you're all that because you're not. Stop pretending that your white clothes whiter than. God, not impressed with your fasting. God, not impressed with your praise and worship. God is impressed with your obedience. God is impressed with your submission. Humble yourself. The way of holiness is not an easy way. No. You think he's married, I don't want to marry it. You... My God Almighty. You think he's married, I don't want to marry it. You think he's husband, I don't want But when you look at what is available, I didn't say who. Holy Ghost. I'm too near to my heavenly home to turn back now. I come too far. And I can't afford for you to mess me up. So all of the married man. Stay married to Uno own wife. Don't wink to me. <laughs> Don't blink to me. Don't send me no texts. Don't comment on our look. Have it. And if you tell me how me look, that means you tell Jane how she look. We are clean. Yes, yes, yes. So, you want to fix all of the women, them, not you, Pastor? Women need to live right and obey. Fix the man, them, too. Everybody need a fixing if we need to get on this way of all in No sin. No sin at all. Pastor sin. <laughs> Apostle sin. Bishop sin. No sin. No sin at all. So, so when you preach, Pastor Moore, you lay me out. Whether it hurt me or it hurt me, lay me out. Amen. And the same way you lay me out, lay him out. Amen. Lay this out. That's right. Cause in a this thing, no wife, no husband, no in a this thing, you know? No, no partiality, none of this thing. Holiness, we say. So, Pastor, if you have to take me off of the choir, do it, take it off. That's right. To straight me out so we can get in the way of holiness. Take me off the choir. Yeah. Take me off the ministerial board. Yeah. So you call me and I'm fasting and pray. I'm here as big minister and I show up. But Sunday morning. My God. Come on. Come on. I'm not missing my preaching assignment. March me down. That's right. How, uh, can we go back to the old time way? Can we go back to the old time way? When the Holy Ghost used to walk in the church. When you see the church, mother come, you take a seat and you head for the back door because you know, say, are you never come for? You know, said God has been 
good. And we see Mother Andrew stand up. We just take a seat real quick. Somebody say, take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to the place. The youth of this generation, pastor and mother, have no idea what the way of holiness is. Because we are pretty up everything, my dear. We are nice up everything. We have to, we have fair. We have to let them know sin is a reproach to any people. Big, small, green, black, white. Sin. Oh, Jesus. So what do you want? You want to shout? You got to ask yourself, is after you finish shouting, am I in the way? Am I in the holiness way? After you just don't correct me, you know, I mean, leave. Uh, me said he wasn't past him. Amen. Have the nerve. If he can't ask me, why me never come to church? What the nerve? And we don't ask him wife. Are you in the way of holiness? And you don't want to forgive? You carrying the grudge holding your brother out for 20 years ago that took place. I thought about you in the way of holiness. My God. Take a tissue. Wipe off the facade. That's right. Take off the mask. Because we're living a lie. You see, we get dressed up just for convocation. Mm. And so we must dress up for all our service. Then. You see, we show it in our numbers. And so we must show up all the time. Amen. Same way. And so God wants it. Holiness! The character and nature. Watch this. Without which, so you could have praise, you could have testify, you could have run the aisle. Holiness, without which, no man shall see God. Decide what you want to do. If you want to continue to play church, decide what you want to do. If you want to continue to play hide and seek, decide what you want to do. If you want to hide by your credentials, hide by your pastoralship, and hide by your doctorate and your professorship, and hide by your, your bishopness and your pastorness. Hide behind that. Hide behind your degrees and your big job. Still holiness, God. Amen. We don't care how big your tights be. Still holiness. Maybe even a holier now, make it. This is the apostolic church. Hallelujah. The God we serve is a holy God. Holy God. Everything about him, holy. holy. And because he has chosen us to be holy. How many of you are trying to be holy? Raise your hand. Stand. Stand. <laughs> You're trying to be holy. Sit. How many of you holy? Stand. You make the pastor tell you if you sit down, sis. That me and talk. You make the pastor. Who is your husband? 
You know, Bible says if you listen to your own husband, you will make the pastor tell you to sit down. See, this is a problem, saints. We're trying. We're not going to make it. Saints, I don't know if this makes any sense, but we're trying. We're not making it. Look how much fasting service we have. And we still come out unholy. Look how much prayer meeting. And we still come out unholy. Look how much Bible we are read. The Bible said, be. Don't try. Be what I call you to be. I call you to be holy. Because I am holy. I have already declared you to be holy. So walk now like you're holy. Stop trying. Yeah. Just be it. Stop the trying because it's not work. Be what God wants you to be. What Joseph said, watch this. How can I do such a wicked thing? You know how he could say that? Because he was holy. Yes. So in other words, because I am holy, I cannot do such a thing. Come on, talk to us. Because you are holy, you cannot go with them. Amen. Because you are holy, you cannot wear that. Amen. It is because you are holy, you know. Yes. Why you can't wear that? God has already declared me to be holy. So you can't follow me? No. So you just one time? No. Why? Because I, I cannot. It is, it's not part of my nature. What do you want? What do you want? What else do you want from God? What else do you want? He said that... Uh, I've laid before you an open door. Ah. Choose ye this way. This day, who you gonna serve? There's a broad way and there's a narrow way. There's only one way. Holiness, you can come out of this, you know. Because Jesus now forced nobody. No. That's right. You won't go join another faith, go on, because we cannot change this. Amen. We can't alter this. Oh. Some of you want us to alter this. Oh. To suit your liking and your desire. Oh. <laughs> it can't change. No. My father told me as a little girl, you obey or steer and you disobey and go. Make up your mind. In a apostolic arena, a holiness of it. That's right. We can't cheat. We can't put an addendum to it. <laughs> we can't put any corrections to it. No amendment, no alteration. Holiness unto the Lord. Amen. So if you if you didn't want to marry John, for example, and John is not in the faith, the apostolic faith, let me make it clear, for their faiths and their faiths, you're going to ask the pastor now if, um, what do you think, pastor? Him save, you know. Yeah, he, he save everything, he baptize and everything. So, so, so what do you think? Come on. <laughs> you see the pastor looking at me, he's not even thinking. Because I should read his face. He said that is out of the question. Him don't even have to think. Just to discern. You never forget Bible. Because he's not in the way. Amen. He or she is not in the way. Amen. So you can't go pick up crosses for your sins. 
You know how many people are in it? I want to come out of it. Stay in the way. Young people, I am begging you. Don't sell out your anointing. Maintain your character. Let him pursue you. <laughs> let him wait on you. Uh, yes, let him seek God for you. You don't run him down. He has to be in the way. Since everything we do, we have to be in the way. All the things that we do out of the way, you know, see them cause us heart ache and pain. And we say, if we didn't know, we be sorry. Let us listen to our elders. Let us listen to those who have rule over us. Amen. Sometimes these pastors, some of them so like they're not making any but God set them over you. I don't have anything I don't have anything else to tell you than to tell you what the word said. Holiness unto the Lord. Yes. It's a habit. Yes. Make it a habit. Amen. Wear it as your yard clothes. Judge it. And I close with this. We've been singing this song. It's in your book. It says, holiness, holiness is what I long for. Not holiness is what I need. Say, I want to say, holiness, holiness is what you want from me. And the verse says, take my
we could sing that song from now till eternity. God will never take our heart and our mind. We've got to. He slapped me on my face with the song, sis. I didn't even know it was your theme song. But when he unfolded it to me and he said, Jesus, he's not taking it, Pastor. That's why we sing, I surrender. And I close with the story of an Indian who came to an apostolic church. He brought his daughter and his wife and they sat at the back. And the preacher was preaching. He said, those who want to give their lives to the Lord, come, the altar is open. People got up, they came to the altar. He said, I want you to give me your all. He said to his wife, you go, you, you go. He nudged her and she went. And the preacher beckoned again. He said to his daughter, now you go. The preacher said, Jesus, God wants you. He sat there, he looked around, he looked around, he nudged the next person, said, you need a God talking to you, you need to go. My God. No, the man said to him, say, you, God wants you. He got up from his seat and he came. He took off the, something like a cassock that he had. And he, he, he decided to give God that. Because that worth a lot of money. Oh, so he emptied his pocket. The preacher said, God don't want that. He took off the other jacket they gave him. The preacher said, God won't want that. Finally, he threw himself down at the altar. He said, here I am, God. I'm giving you me. He told God to take his wife. Take his daughter. Say, you me one. He took everything else from himself to surrender, but he refused to give God him. God wants you tonight. No, don't send your daughter. Don't send your husband. God wants you. There is a way that seems right unto a man. God said, I've prepared a highway for you. A way of righteousness for you. A way of truth for you. A way of healing for you. He said, come to the water and stand by. And drink from the fountain, you won't be denied. Only if you want to walk in this way. Seeing every tear come inside. Maybe you slipped out of the way. Maybe you walked out. Sometimes, and this is what our apostolic churches have been doing, we sing out the altar call. Can we just good upon the singing? Um, and the people don't get to really talk to God. This is the altar of repentance. It's the altar of prayer. 
It's the place of restoration. It's the place of healing. You talk to God for yourself. Say, God, I slip up your nose. So I thought my two feet were in the way, you know. But I get to realize I only got one foot in the way. God, I've been hiding under my title, hiding. But God, you know where I live. You know the condition of my heart. You know what I want to be. Circumstances situation but you call me to be holy yes. and holy I want to be what are the things tonight that are preventing us hindering our growth and our consecration to God let's get real with God we need to get real one thing with us people we're not real we're not real with ourselves and we're not real with God we're not honest before God you're trying to look around to see who's seeing you or who's looking at you or who is listening to what you're saying. You care not. Your soul is important. So where you are now with God on a scale of 1 to 10? Measure yourself. Where are you on the highway? Oh, glory to God. Consecrate me now to the service, Lord, by thy power. Don't play, don't play. We want to hear our voices. Let my soul. God want to hear you. Oh, yes. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Oh, glory to God. Yes. To the cross. Fashion way, God. Transactions on. Ah. 